Hi and welcome, thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Matthias and we're here with the Underwater Filmmaking School. I'm here today with my friend Hürgen. Thank you very much for having us no here problem. at the Nauticam stand. And Hürgen's gonna give us a quick rundown on what is new and what is most exciting that Nauticam will bring out in the future or has already brought out just recently. Hürgen, what can you tell us? Uh, it's been a it's been a banner year for, for new stuff and new products. Um, so we'll sort of start off right here, shall we? Um, so this is the WACP2, so the wide angle conversion port. Um, about, I would say, two years ago, we released the original WACP. And so what that does is it's, a, it's actually not just a port, it's a port and a lens. Um, so behind it is a regular uh, camera, camera lens. And then this is another lens that sits in front of it. And so what it does is it takes a 28 millimeter equivalent lens mm -hmm. and converts into 130 degree wide angle. It focuses right on the front element. Um, full zoom through, incredibly sharp corners, even at open apertures like 5.6. Um, so that was really uh, sort of a game changer for, for underwater, being able to have uh, uh, a lens that's really designed specifically to be used underwater. Um, and so this is our second version. Um, and so the second version has a slightly larger front element. So the one was 140, this is 230. Um, so the same 130 degrees, uh, focuses right on the front element, but this is designed for uh, 16 to 16 millimeter lenses. Yep. So, and it'll even with some 14 millimeter lenses, we'll get 140 degrees. Um, awesome. And then this one will focus in air, so you can also use it for split shots. Um, nice. so this is a pretty incredible, piece of kit. It's only been out in the field for a little bit, so a couple people have had the opportunity to try it, but um, yeah, that's going to be uh, that's gonna be pretty awesome. awesome. Looking what forward to of, trying that. What kind of cameras would you use with that? Um, it's going to work on uh, a lot of DSLRs, um, and the full-frame mirrorless cameras are going to really benefit from, from that, and then of course like cinema systems and things like that. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. right what on. else have we got? What else have we got? Um, so this is the housing for the uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, but this is the 6K version. Okay. Um, so the big change between the 4K version and the 6K version um, is this is now part of our N120 port system. Yeah. Um, so that's what's shared with a lot of the DSLRs. Yeah. Um, so if you're moving from like a 1DX or something like that, and you're moving to this or 5D4, uh, you can use your same ports and extensions, uh, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and then it's also got the cinema style zoom and focus knobs, which is a pretty cool little addition there. Awesome. Right on. Fantastic. And then another cool new item for us, um, this is the WWLC. Um, so again, this is a conversion optic, right? So this is specifically designed for underwater use. And this is the second version. So our first version, the WWL1, that was also aimed at 28 millimeter lenses. But what we found is a lot of the compact cameras tend to start at 24 millimeters. Right. Um, so you always had to kind of zoom a little bit to get it to work. Yeah. Um, so with this, this one is aimed uh, straight at 24 millimeters. Awesome. So a lot of the compact cameras. Um, so it has a slightly smaller form factor because of that. And it's got the built-in buoyancy collar on it. Um, and then of course it's on our bayonet mount system, which is super easy to change out underwater. Fantastic. And I've got this set up on the TG6 housing. Right. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, and the cool thing is, is even if you don't have a Nauticam TG6 housing, if you have the Olympus PT058059, which was their TG5, TG6 housing, um, we actually make an adapter that you can mount that bayonet mount on the front of that housing and use the WWLC. So that's pretty That's pretty cool. That's the first time we've made a, an adapter for someone else's housing. So wow. it's going to be pretty cool. Cool. So that's yeah. something for the lower budget shooter, I guess, then. Yeah, I mean, it's really a way to take uh, sort of a budget camera and give it professional optics and really kind of uh, take that imaging to the next level. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. So let's move down to the other end here. Yep. So this right here, this is the NAE2. And so this is for the Z cam or the Z cam as our European yeah. friends have been calling it. Um, and this is a pretty incredible camera. So this, the camera body itself is only about $2,000, but it'll record 4K at up to 160 frames a second. Um, and it does that in uh, H.265, uh, so the newer kind of heavy compression. Um, or you can actually, at 4K60, shoot in ProRes. Um, and they also have their own sort of partial debrayer raw light format. Um, but it is super compact. Um, this is the smallest cinema housing ever produced, right? 
Um, and if you even take the handles off, we've got some nice uh, quarter inch thread mounts on the top here. So think pole cams, other kind of remote shooting yeah. capabilities with it. Um, it does require a monitor because the camera itself doesn't have a monitor. Yeah. It's super compact. It uses the Sony NP batteries um, and it's a micro four thirds lens mount. So if you're moving from a GH5 or anything like that, all your lenses, ports, move it right over um, and you can shoot at 4K 160 frames a second, which that's is pretty, cool. pretty yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. pretty incredible. Um, and then if you uh, want to go a little bigger, um, this is the housing for the Panasonic S1H. Right. Um, so of course the S1 comes in three flavors, the S1, the S1R, and then the S1H. Yeah. So the S1 and S1R both fit in the same housing, the NAS1R. Um, the NAS1H is for the S1H. And the big difference is the S1H does 6K nice. internal, yeah. right, which is pretty cool. So I've spent quite a bit of time with the S1 and the S1R. It's sort of the same with the A7. The S1R is a higher resolution sensor aimed more at still photography. The S1 is more of the hybrid shooter, so records really nice internal uh, 4K 60. Um, and then the S1H is really aimed at the cinema market with that 6K. Um, so you've got sort of that nice variety there. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. And so that's that's pretty much what we've got that's new and exciting. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, of course, there's always more stuff coming out every day. There's always more uh, stuff, right? Camera makers keep making more cameras. We keep making housings. You know? <laughs> that's what you do, guys. Yeah, Excellent. We try. Bergen, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. You're doing a great job, guys. Thank Thanks. you very much for being here for us, and thank you for taking the time to explain to us all the new stuff. Of course. Coming Thanks out. for coming by, Matthias. Good thank to you, see man. you, man. Same here. Thanks. Thanks.